There's only one way of properly learning how to code, and that is by building things. When I look back over my years in software engineering, it's clear that the times that I learned the most was whenever I sat down and actually built projects from beginning to end. And seeing them through is the most important aspect. Those last 10% will teach you the most, which is also why I started this channel. I want to build as many projects as possible while also feeling some kind of pressure to actually finish them. Because without a finished project, there's not gonna be a video. So even if none of those projects ever become successful, I will take something away from each one of them. And the thing I'm building today will likely never be successful. But that doesn't matter to me because today it's just about learning. I always thought that removing the dislike count on videos was a bad move by YouTube. I like being able to see what others thought of a video when I clicked on it. On top of that, building browser extensions always interested me, so I thought building my own YouTube rating plugin would be a great way to start. There are obviously a lot of easier browser plugins you can start off with, just because it requires quite a bit more than just adding some buttons to the YouTube page. Instead, here I had to build a whole backend, create a database just to store the given ratings by the users. Since I'm used to building backends though, and this was also a pretty simple one, this is where I started. So what I've done now is I created the backend. So if we look into that, I have um, the ability to query all that data. So I can say here, for example, I want to create a new user uh, called Kiso. So I'm saying I'm sending that. It tells me, okay, a user has been registered. This is the user ID. Now, if I take that and say, okay, well, now I want to make a rating on a video. I just go and say, well, user ID Kiso and then you see rating successfully added. If I go, for example, and say rating of three, you see that now the rating has successfully updated, right? So the same user can only rate a video once, which is important. So the only thing I really have to do is now build the front end. And that, like I said, no idea, so I have to figure out exactly how to do that. My first mission was just to display anything on the screen. Seriously, anything, and I'd be happy. Generally, there are different ways of building a browser extension, but mainly what you're doing is you'll be injecting some JavaScript code into your browser on specific pages. For me, that meant whenever you open a YouTube video page, my script should run and inject my own rating bar right under the video title. And that part of the script was in theory pretty easy but the whole setup was not, at least not to me. I had to first figure out how to work in the new Chrome plugin environment. So after about an hour of trying around, I got to my first mini success. Oh, shit, I didn't see that. Okay, we're at the stage where you'll see that as soon as stuff gets loaded, I can create my own element in here, so there you see first test, does this appear in the right place? After that, things went downhill. To create the stars for the rating, I decided to use Font Awesome, which gives you the symbols right out of the box, thinking this would make it all easy peasy. However, that ended up being <laughs> difficult, difficult, lemon difficult. I had it in the script, I decided to go with it. Anyway, here's the thing. Stuff like this is usually the main reason why you won't make deadlines. If you told me before the project that my main delay would be caused by trying to import a style sheet, I would have never believed you. Often the most complex stuff turns out to go quite smoothly, while something you thought you'd be able to do in 5 minutes suddenly takes 5 hours. But on the other side, when you finally get it to work, the relief is so much bigger. Oh my god, finally. Oh, that was the worst. So this is wonderful now that I have the stars on the screen, that I also know how to manipulate the color. I can now just write generally the the whole logic of like, okay, if you hover, it changes color and does this and that. And then I still have to do the whole communication with 
the back end. After getting the stars to work, I moved on to writing the functionality for the front end, meaning what should happen when you click on the stars, what happens when you hover over them, how do you get feedback that your rating was sent, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what I've done by now is, on one hand, I built the front end, everything the user sees, the bar where you can see how, whether you've given a rating, what the average rating is, and so on, I built that on the front end. Now, on the other hand, I have my back end that is also connected to the database. So those two aspects work by themselves. I now just have to make it that they connect to each other well. And that actually went quite smoothly. The only thing that gave me trouble was creating a user ID on installation, just because I had no idea how to test for it. But eventually, I figured that one out too. So I'm trying to install it now and then send the user ID from here. So if I click install, what we should have is in our database, we should get a 10th entry. There we go. Oh my God. In my database, I should have some video ratings. So if I check, for example, this video ID here, and I go and look at that, there we go. Okay, so that that's nice. But that means here I see I haven't given this a rating yet. That's perfect. Um, and I see the average rating. So that works. I can get that from the database, which is absolutely amazing. And now I just have to do it when I click on this that I send it. And I think I already, before my break, I've done that. Um, but I'm really not sure whether this is going to work. So if I click here now on five, what... Best case scenario, what happens is, first of all, no errors on the right side, and it will take a little bit and then tell me, okay, now it's five ratings and hopefully um, the average rating increases. And also here it should tell me you've given it a rating. So that should happen actually first. So if I click, you see I've given it a rating of five. Oh my God, that actually works. I've, okay, just, just for why the reaction was so strong. I've written this and then I had like one hour meeting and I didn't, I never tried this out. I did not expect this to work. That is crazy. That was a really nice moment just now, just because it was so unexpected and everything else has been, has been honestly a bit annoying um, over the last few hours because there were so many little things that would always take me so long. And now this, actually there's one more thing I have to check here because Right now, my Chrome extension has an ID. If I, if I click another time on this, it should, if I click five stars, it shouldn't do anything. If I click one star, we should still see it has five ratings, but the average rating should actually go down, okay? I'm a bit scared. If this works, I'm... Oh my God, it works. Oh my God, it works. Oh, right. I have one thing still to do. I have to reset everything when I switch pages because right now it's gonna tell me for every video that I've not given this a rating yet. And this turned out to be a lot harder than expected. The plugin was working fine now for any individual video, but as soon as you switch pages, it would mess up, which I thought would be very easy to fix. I mean, waiting for a page change in the browser should be super easy to implement in a browser plugin, no? However, when I tried to do something on a URL change, this is what happened. Um, and then it actually does something weird. Look, like if I click on this now, <laughs> I get 10 stars. Which also I think this, oh, now I get a rating of 10. Why do I get 10 stars? Oh my God. I think it's working now. I'm gonna give it a run. This was incredibly difficult. I would have never thought that in a browser extension, there's no easy way to check when you switch websites or not even websites, just like switch videos in this case here, right? Like literally, it should, I thought it would be so easy. And this has been very, very difficult, or at least for me, but it seems to now work. By now though, my code again is very 
ugly, although I guess it's fine, right? For everything that we're doing, we have 242 lines of code. There's still places where it can, you know, improve on it. Anyway, nobody cares. If I now go to, let's say I go to my channel because I think I have a few things already rated, right? It's here. Let's say I go to five ratings, boom. That works. If I go into another video of mine, this one I haven't rated yet. Let's remember I put this to three stars. If I now go back to my channel and I figure out to do, do which one was it? The very first video. It should tell me again. There's three stars. Perfect. It works. Right now I'm exhausted. This was supposed to be a shortish project. I thought the front end stuff would take me like two hours. I thought the back end stuff like two hours and then maybe an additional two hours for just figuring things out. At the end of the day, this probably took me like 10, 11 hours, which is a lot, but also I think it's actually a little bit more of a complex Chrome extension than you would usually build as your first project. And the main thing I wanted to do here was learn. And I think I've done that like, um, I feel confident enough now that if I have to do any other browser plugins or if I have an idea for any kind of extension, I can do that pretty quickly or I can figure it out with, I mean, ChatGPT is obviously a big help, but with this stuff as well, like you get so much additional functionality, like you can literally take any website and think, oh, this is a feature I would like to have on here. And on top of that, all the productivity tools you can build and things you can automate, it's crazy. So in my opinion, this project here might not be, you know, one that I have to maintain in the future. In other words, this might not be something that gets millions of downloads. I don't know if people find it helpful. I don't know. I think it is helpful or it is a nice extension if more people use it. But the main thing for me is that I know now I have an additional tool I can use and I can potentially also use in my work or use for me to create more productivity tools or just build fun things, which really is what this channel is all about.